<clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we invite your presence here today as we look at the time that we're in, in a very literal sense. Uh, we know, Lord, that there's all these dates and numbers, spans of time uh, that have symbols related to uh, your word. And we may not fully understand what they mean, but we just ask, Lord, that as we look at these things, that you can help us first to understand what they are and then to try to understand how we are to apply these things. We pray that your spirit can be with Iran as he presents, uh, help him to have clear thoughts and to remember the things he needs to and help each of us to, to listen carefully and to understand the things we hear. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so you can put your, share your screen, I guess. And, yeah. Okay, is that visible? Oh, yeah. Looks good. I mean, I don't know how everybody sees it as far as the size of the pictures and the text. So that would be depending on what a person's looking at. But on my laptop and my desktop it's very clear yeah on a mobile device it might be difficult but um i, yeah, I will uh, once this gets posted i'll also try to include a link to, to the slide so people can look closer okay. at it so i decided uh just to start with around january 9th kind of what was happening at the time you could go, easily go back further but um there was a pre presentation um i think it was the friday just before because january 9th was the sabbath um yeah. and you had been reviewing the week of christ study which you've done in other times like 2018 um mm -hmm. and i'd watched that previously um many times before it got removed um but basically, the one thing that, you know, once I had that review, I, that one thing that stood out was um, the date for this year, uh, which would have been the April 23 that you're seeing. Let me see if I, right here, you, can, you guys can see my mouse, right? Yep. On the screen. Okay. So um, I saw something. Where, where is it right now? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Look for it. Sure. You know, and I may even be able to, um, I don't know if, if it's going to work, but, um, you know, you can do annotations like that too. Oh, okay. Yeah, that helped. But, but yeah. okay. So another thing that ha well okay so starting out with what happened on on this day i you know I attended the, the service and then in the afternoon i had started i decided i was gonna put some of the numbers into the um the calendar converter that you have uh, mm -hmm. the troy one yeah. uh and so i i entered of course the first one there the april 23 and i entered a couple that we had just passed through, which one of them would, would have been um, January 6th, which related to uh, what the events in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also, you know, based on, because before that happened, we had the 126 that we had calculated. And then I also added 252 because I figured, well, if January yeah. So explain that more. That. What's the 126 and the 252 there? So that's on January 6th and January 12th. You're getting these numbers. Yeah. So the January 6th is it's the product of the date, which means you multiply one times six times 21. Yeah. And then you come up with that number 126. And then again on January 12th, it's just a doubling because it's January times 12 times 21 is 252. Yeah, 252. And it, yeah, and then you have the biblical date of the 10th day of the 22nd month. 
or the 22nd day of the 10th month, which would lead to October 22nd as a symbol. And the significance yeah. there is that it's 187 days. Exactly. It's it's like, you know, I haven't really even thought through everything here, but it's it's almost like a reverse timeline because you have 1022 there mm -hmm. at the beginning, you know, and then you have um, that that period of, of 187 days yeah. taking you to July 18, you see there on the, on the yeah. right side. Yeah, and we also have 187 days that precede October 22nd. And that goes from July 4th. Yes, there was there was another chart I had reviewed. Uh, you had produced some some charts as well that I looked at, but um, definitely would refer people to, you know, the Friday night before the before January 9th, you know, those presentations from your channel and you know other presentations from the Week of Christ. Yeah. Um, it's all good for for background information. Yeah. Now, just to clarify the week of Christ, what we noticed is that in the literal week of Christ's, from his baptism to his uh, ascension, and then finally to the stoning of Stephen, that we have the years that went backwards. And these years, as they go backwards, match up with biblical dates that we were applying to the last week of Christ as far as his personal week, even though it's in 27 A.D., not in 31, that we're looking at these dates, they line up with them as a symbol. And for instance, in 2020, the biblical date was the 11th day of the first month. Correct? That's, that's what we had. But we just looked at that date as a Gregorian date. And that's the date that Jeff had that ended the midnight chiasm. And now you're looking at this date, the 10th day of the first month, on the biblical calendar, but you're not looking at it as a Gregorian date. That's the date up at the top there, April 23rd. So that's applying the biblical date from the week of Christ, which is in the year 2021, and you're looking at it on our line, and you're saying it's April 23rd. Yeah, it... it on the biblical that's the 10th day of the first yeah so the and uh, yeah. it's the triumphal entry date yeah or no, the day after the triumphal entry pardon me so it's the cleansing of the temple date when jesus enters into the temple as the passover lamb and then he cleanses the temple the next morning so and at the time i had um i'd seen the 86 days there and I, I initially, you can see, I, I thought it maybe it's related to Hiroshima, and I think it is related, um, but maybe not in the way I had initially thought about it. Um, now, 86, uh, 86 for Hiroshima because August 6th. Yeah, and you can see a little bit of the conversation we had there about that. Um, and we had also had this discussion a little bit about the 193. Um, you, you had had, you had published a document about Ashley. Yeah. Just recently mm -hmm. uh, about 193. And then I had noticed um, that there was 193 nations to the UN as part of it. Mm -hmm. um, now we used a little bit of gematria there as well. So Ashley Babbitt, uh, this was um, uh, using gematria with her name. Right. So, you know, it, a few hours went by, you could see this message here is at almost 11 p.m. And I, this is about how far I, I'd gotten, I, I'd introduced uh, today's date and I, this 193 is actually in the wrong spot. Yeah. But I had, you know, I put this 187 um, and this 101, I, I actually didn't initially recognize this 101, but I related it because uh, this 10th day of the first month, you can take it as 101. So this 
mm -hmm. kind of confirmed to me that uh, this period was actually valid in some way because it has this 101 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a number of, of things there. So Ashley Babbitt, the 193, I got from a gematria of her name in English. And then the interesting thing is when I did her name in Hebrew, it was 777. So there was two applications of her name, uh, the English, okay. Ashley Elizabeth Babbitt, Babbitt, and the Hebrew letters, gematria equally in 777. So that seemed pretty profound that, that her name had two different things. Now, just to clarify, you know, for anybody watching this, we don't believe in magical numerology. We're not using gematria in that way. What we're looking at is we look at these numbers and we see them as symbols that are established in Bible prophecy in some way or other. And 193 is 391 in reverse. So that's both the prophecy of Josiah Lich and the prophecy of Ezekiel. So numbers can happen in reverse as symbols. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I hadn't remembered the 193 part, but yeah, that's definitely true. Um, and then, so continuing on here, the next day, January 10, you had sent me this diagram. Um, and you had related it to the 10 days of prayer as well. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. So just simply March 27th, 2020. So that's a year and one day ago. Um, the, the Seventh Day Adventist Church began 100 days of prayer. And that ended on July 4th. And July 4th as a symbol uh, represents the first day of the first month for the United States. Because it's it's their start, you know, July 4th, 1776. And just like on the biblical calendar, from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, it's 187 days. So January 6th being 187 days from July 4th, and being the 22nd day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar, it has the symbol of the Day of Atonement. So it, it has the symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month. And then we had... Um, that also marked the beginning of 10 days of prayer. So a 10th of the 100 days of prayer. And the 10 days of prayer uh, ended on January 16th. So those symbols um, that are marking the beginning here, you're focusing more on what happens after these dates. I was focused more on the beginning. And the 13 days from July 4th to July 18th, um, is 187 or 18,720 minutes, which is a symbol of July 18, 2020. And then from December 25th, the attack on Nashville to the siege in Washington was 13 days. And that again is a period of 18,720 minutes. And 100 days is 144,000 minutes. And 10 days would be one tenth of that. So, so you have all of these symbols related to. Uh, 187, which is July 18th, but also which is related to uh, the structure of from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, and then also the July 18th symbols and the 144,000 symbols. So in um, now in this one here, you're, I'm just looking at your 193 days. So can you explain that? Because that's probably what you want to, I took what you did and I wrote it out. Sure. Um, ma mainly, I just had noticed that from January 6th to July 18th, that was the 193. Yeah. And, I, and I don't recall if I had really associated it with the 391, which, which I think it is, probably. Oh, yeah, um, it's, it's, definitely. It shows up again and again in these lines, as well as 139, another uh, inversion of it. I d do you remember what this October 10 is? Yes, yeah, so October 10 is a symbol of the siege. Um, now, this October 10, 1985, um, is, um, I can't remember what the 1985 was. I'd have to look it up again. It was something okay. I was doing. I don't think it's related to this line particularly. 
Okay, sure. Um, but I have it there for some reason. I'm trying to remember what it was. Is it this December? Because you have 1010 10 here as well. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. I don't remember now why that's there. But the October 10th is the 10th day of the 10th month. And it shows up again and again in these lines as because that's the date that the siege began. But I'm trying to remember why I put it, what the 1985 one was. I'm going to have to look that up again. I don't remember. Okay. So um, I'm trying to remember this. Okay, so I had continued to work on the diagram, and this is kind of where it went. Um, it was it went through a for five or six iterations yeah. before before it actually got to, to where it is here. Um, you know, it was the smaller area. At yeah. First. Oh, I think my just, audio may and just and just yeah, your audio is a little odd. Can you hear yeah, me? Somebody gave me a call on my, on my phone, so okay. I think that disrupted it. So I'll just explain a couple of things here. So you have this um, when you put this July eighteenth, twenty one, on this chart from the siege of Washington. It ends up being 187 days. Um, so, so you made a mistake where you put the 187 days down at the bottom. So, so when it says 187 days from the 12th, that's not correct. It's 187 days from the 6th. And you can see that by what's above. And uh, the word atonement in Gematria comes out to 107, which is kind of interesting. Um, and you're still having trouble getting your sound back. Sounds like. Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, can you hear? Can you hear it all? Yeah, I can hear you. It's just okay. it sounds different. It's it. good now. So this 107 days, if you look up the word atonement in just simple gematria, it's 107. And when he had put Hiroshima here as 86, I thought he was doing the same thing and I thought he made a mistake regarding the gematria. Uh, but the gematria for Hiroshima is 100. But this was actually just based on the date for the dropping of the bomb on Hiroshima. And then he has the dates divided as 101 days which is using this 10th day of the first month biblical back from April 23rd, a span of 101 days, and then the six days. So you can see obviously that this 187 days is wrong. So uh, the question that I have is, Wait, do you sorry, have, a, which... so I was just dealing with this six days and 101 days. And, and your 187 days is out of place on the bottom, right? It should go. No, over. It should be correct because uh, it's from January 12th to oh, oh, uh, okay. July 18. Because that's 86 oh, plus yes, one. Right. Never mind. I'm wrong. Yeah, because that's 193 days. <laughs> okay. Yes, you're right. This is the 187 days to July 18th. So I had 187 days going up to the 6th of January. You have 187 days going from the 12th of January. So the six days, how do we explain the six days in between with the ninth? So you asked about the six days. Um, yeah. Well, it's really just based on the, those two periods this, that we just talked about earlier, the, the January 6th to January 12th. Um, yeah. Just the fact that there's a division point, or, a, or I don't know if you want to call it a pin, because we don't necessarily have something for January 12th. I have an idea of something that may have happened then, but I'm not sure about it, so I'm not going to. Yeah, and then January 9th, it's just 
an increase of light. Because that's when I came to understand this. Yes. Uh, and it's the middle of that six day period. Mm -hmm. And I have another chart later on that kind of goes more into this, the, 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 the same dates. Because in this chart, it's not very symmetrical. It's just, these are the few things that I found. But then I came back later to see if there's, if it can be made more sym symmetrical. Um, so we'll see that. Okay. Uh, and I believe a lot of the stuff there on the bottom, I came back in a, in a later iteration to add these in. Yeah. Um, I think it was on February, February um, 20th, which worked out to be a Fibonacci date. Mm -hmm. And I posted that, I wasn't really intentional, but I posted that at, um, 10 o'clock in, in the evening, which is 2200. Um, but there is all these different lines that point to July 18. Um, the midpoint that we discussed on the previous slide where it was the, the end of the 10 days of prayer, uh, it was January 16. And it also turned out to be 11.4 which is a different number we've seen. So 11.4, just, just to take a minute to talk about that. Um, uh, it's an alternate symbol for Passover because you just need to yeah. essentially rearrange the numbers so that yeah. it's the first month, 14th day. Yeah. Um, and we obviously have a year there and then the 26 day period. So a year and 26 days is 391. That take, takes you out to the other Fibonacci date on the Gregorian calendar. And uh, the warning that was published was on June 21, so which worked out to be 391.5 days. Mm -hmm. And then we already we already had the papal infallibility date. I think we even related it last year. Yeah, it may have just been because of the one eighty sevens and and the and the seven eighteen. Yeah. Um, and we may I don't remember remember for sure, but we may have even said that it one hundred and fifty years. You, do you know like that relates to something that's hidden. Right. So, and it also relates to Josiah Lich's prophecy, five months, which is five months, right. Hidden, right? So that's, that's Elizabeth, uh, the hiding of Elizabeth. Exactly. So, so not everybody's going to always be familiar with all these symbols. And, you know, so, but we can see things like the fact that papal infallibility was declared on July 18th in 1870. That that's a doubling of 187, and that it's 151 years. So we did 150 years to July 18, 2020, but the 151 years was based upon Daniel 5:25 with the the meaning meaning tikkun yufarsin, and applying the meaning as um, 60 shekels rather than 50 shekels because both are possible yeah and the reference for the 60 shekels is there ezekiel 45 yeah, 12. 45 12. yeah but generally it's 50 but ezekiel 45 12 has it as a 60 by an addition of 25 uh it's 25 10 and 15 or something like that so. yeah or no, 25, that wouldn't, yeah, that, that wouldn't work out. That'd be 50. I can't remember how, how it divides it, but it divides it up and it adds up to 60 shekels per man or mean. Yeah, the way that, that, that it works is you have two many, which are 60 each. So 60 plus 60 is 120. Yeah. And you have half, which is um, 30. 30. And that brings it to 150. And then there's one. So yeah. it's 151. Yeah. 
Uh, and there's one other thing on this chart. I didn't really get to diagram it, but it, it was something that I had been thinking about this, um, the 4.7 here. Um, when we were studying like Ezekiel, we talked about the ratio, I think, of the river. Um, and, you know, we, I think we had 1.75 for that because you, you divide seven over four and you get 1.75. Okay. Um, and then I, I saw also that if you went one, if you took one length or like one year, you let the one represent one year and you go the other way, uh, 0.75, in relation to 813, it takes you to August 6th as well. So it's- Do you have that drawn somewhere else? I don't, sorry? You don't, do you have that drawn somewhere? I don't, I don't think that specifically is drawn anywhere. I'm just pointing it out right now because I've been thinking about it. Yeah, and the August 6th is gonna be in some of your diagrams here. It's just not in this diagram. Yes. So were there any questions on this diagram that are things I might not have covered? Oh, like, um, I, I didn't think we talked about the 426s. Um, 26 days in the fourth month. Exactly. And that's definitely part of Josiah Lich's timeline. Mm -hmm. I think definitely, probably we need to go back to other presentations to, but you, we had that 426 appear like five times in that the, the timeline that's related to 391. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're seeing also this 426 related to 391 as well. Yeah, and, and you can see that when you, you count it, it brings you to, and it's the 391.5 symbol, it brings you to August 13th. And August 13th is a Fibonacci uh, sequence plus you also have the 21. So in a Fibonacci sequence, you add the previous number. So it'd be one, one, two, three, five, eight, because one plus one is two, one plus two is three, um, two plus three is five, five plus three is eight, um, and then uh, five plus eight is 13, eight plus 13 is 21. So it's a Fibonacci sequence this year, August 13th is. But it's yeah, also and... related 391.5 days back to July 18th, 2020. Yes. Yeah, and this was partially find, found out by uh, Dan Vanderhorst. So this was kind of his, his recognition of the August 13th. But he also comes to it other ways. Yes. So it's actually more witnesses for August 13th. One of the things that makes this particular August 13th special is, you know, the 21, because it's the highest that you can, you know, if you have a set of three numbers, that's the highest you can set you can do the Fibonacci sequence, because the next number is um, 34, which would not work in, in, a, in a Roman date. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't, well, you don't have 13 months. So you couldn't have like the 21st day of the 13th month of 2034. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, so again, you know, we're looking at these dates. We see them as symbols. Um, August 13th, originally Dan had looked at August 13th, 2022, which went past our line. And I just took a lot of these dates as just confirmation of the dates that we already had. That is, I wasn't looking at every single structural date as some event that we could predict. Even March 27th, 2021, we never had an event for it ever in this movement that we thought we know what's gonna happen or that anything is gonna happen. Um, so, but what we had is the center date, March 27th, 2020 because we also had March 27th, 2019. And it was that center date where we really had the event. And that event was the 100 days of prayer. And since it was a symbol of the Levites, and often the center of the chiasm, either as a key that unlocks the chiasm, 
or it's the most important event in the chiasm. So March 27th, 2020 is really what March 27th, 2021 is about. Um, and so when we have these other dates in the future, it, their symbols have to do with a structure. They're not just, you know, we're not every single date are we saying, uh, and, and especially future dates, we have no idea. We can, we can only look at the symbols of what they mean and how they're part of the structure. And then you also have these warnings. So you have these warning dates. Um, now, explain why they're a warning date. Um, on, on June 21st, uh, that was the second time that the Tennessean had published an article Mm -hmm. uh, about the destruction of Nashville, and but that's the time that um, when that happened, there were like many, many different um, news agencies that picked up that story in a negative way. Uh, mm -hmm. And basically, because of that, the, the message went worldwide, and it didn't yeah. cost anything. It was free. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and then why is yeah, it the a warning date? And yeah, it's also 391.5 to July 18. It, yeah, July 18 was the subject of the warning. So it was just saying that on July 18, this is what's expected. Yeah. Uh, but I also wanted to note that Ellen White talks about, you know, it'd probably be good to have that quote, but she says that even when um, people are criticizing that's still considered part of the way that the gospel message gets spread. Yeah. Now also the date itself. Um, the date itself. Oh, right. That's a reverse of 126, right? Yeah. And that's also six times 21 times 20 is 25, 20. Oh, okay. I, I guess I forgot about that part. It'd be good yeah. to, to add in there. Yeah, and also July 18th itself is uh, 126, seven times 18 is. Well, I just thought of this, but you know how 126 represents a period of darkness, right? Yeah. So this is this is about enlightening, enlightening the world, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. The reverse of one, 126, which is about darkness. So this is about light. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our lines have actually been about an increase of light, either within this message or within the world that we've seen. So our message has moved from internal uh, and gradually has been taken notice of externally. Um, as far as July 18th, um, that, that um, prediction was also caught the advent attention of Adventists. Um, yeah. and, Adventist, and Adventist scholars and Adventist leaders. So um, that's really the first time this movement has been noticed. A lot of people um, think because of our limited perspective that Jeff Pippinger had been noticed before, um, but he really hadn't. He was noticed by certain conservative groups within Adventism, but not Adventism in general. So uh, you know, obviously people in the Pacific Northwest uh, would have known about Jeff Pippinger um, and, and very conservative Adventists who were against the 2520. But, you know, as far as talking to one guy from the BRI, BRI Biblical Research Institute, he said, we were never even on their radar. They had no knowledge of what we were doing. And um, only a slight, uh, somebody was asked once, and I think it was, what's his name? can't think of his name um but he was asked once and he wrote something that's uh well, don't lose. the guy who wrote that book um on the history of adventism but he uh you know he was just asked about it he didn't really know there was a movement or anything it was just a question that was asked him so until this july 18th prediction uh not only did the world not know of us before this um Adventism really didn't know about us. So, so it has been a worldwide warning both to the world and to Adventism. Yeah. 
Okay. If there aren't any other questions about this slide, I'm gonna to go to the next one. Okay. Okay, so I'm not exactly remembering when this was, but um, I'm sure I could figure it out, but we did. It's a few weeks ago. Not yeah. Was... I think it was, yeah, it was probably shortly after I had noticed uh, reverse Fibonacci day. Uh, and that had actually happened like nine days before the fact. Yeah. Um, so, so you can see it, you can actually see that here. Oh, my drawing's not working. Now the reverse Fibonacci date, that is the Mayan calendar. And it's just that um, the first number on the right, so the three, that represents a number of days. So it's three days. Five represents five times 20. And um, and then the eight is eight. Well, it's eight times. Um, uh, let me see how does that work. So it's um, yeah five. I shouldn't say it's five times twenty. It's um, yeah it's twenty days. Five times twenty, so it'd be a hundred and three days. And then the eight is uh, eight times three sixty. So that would be the number of days from December twenty first, twenty twelve, when the 13th back to begins. So that 13 is, so some people are familiar with the Mayan calendar. The point is that to have a Fibonacci date like this, 3, 5, 8, 13 in reverse, is very rare. It's a, it's kind of a singularity unless you go like maybe a couple thousand years or so. Yeah. Yeah. So in our time, it's the only time that you're going to have a Fibonacci date represented in the mind calendar, Fibonacci sequence. Um, so start, starting really at this date, um, I think Theodore had suggested that, you know, it probably would relate to 220 or, and so I went back to 20 days and I had noticed um, it, it relates to 423, which is, you know, we'd already talked about 423. It's um, the central date of this year um, on the on the line of Christ, or really the line of the Antichrist uh, coming back to four, April 23, 10th day of the first month. Yeah. Um, so I also saw it was July 15th. And I, I see, I, I noticed it was the 200 and I started out with this 282 days, which I recognized. Um, it's not in the slides, but one of the, one of the things I recognized was the speed of light and how there's, you can do a calculation because it's um, uh, 186,282 miles, miles per second. Yes. And uh I saw that as a compliment. So I noticed that if you, you just added in 718 to that, which is 187, yeah, 187,000 miles per second. Yeah. So, yeah. So you get that you're adding July 18 to the speed of light and it gives you 187,000. So, so it, it's, yeah, it's a compliment. It's, I almost think of it as a reverse impression or something like that. That you you take a number and you you put it in reverse, and that's just the thousand does that. And we haven't done this a lot, but we have done it, where we look at a number and we can see that it relates if it was, you know, you subtract a thousand or add a, and and you will get the other number that's a common symbol. So. Yeah, um, and I'll I'll talk next about what I think this this thing this on the top the compliment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting the idea that you know this is giving us a calendar. It's pointing to calendar conversions because you can relate these dates together. 
the, the doubling of the 423. And then if you go back 718, it gives you the same date. And yeah, at the bottom 15, here. 15, yeah, so 715, 18, 715, 20. So that one's two years apart. And, but it's a Julian and a Gregorian date, right? That's the main point there. Yes, if you wanna go, generally speaking, you can go from Julian to Gregorian with 718, or you can use 18720 minutes to go from Gregorian to Julian or vice versa. And right. You can that. Yeah, and so, and that's because 13 days between the Julian and the Gregorian in the present century, that means that if you're gonna count um, 18720, so that's a symbol of July 18, 2020. You can count that many minutes and it'll bring you to from the, uh, usually it goes from the Gregorian to the Julian if you count that way from left to right, but you can count backwards. But also you're saying that if you count 718 days, it will bring you from the Julian to the Gregorian date. Yeah which is it's mainly true of the last couple of hundred years or so um, because it used to be, you know, 12 days or 11 days. Yeah, so yeah, in the, 18, the 1800s, it was 12 days. In the 1700s, it was 11 days between them. So we've had in the 19th and the 20th century, 19th century, that'd be the 20th and the 21st century, pardon me, that it's 13 days apart and it'll change um, if the world went on long enough, it would change when we get to uh, the 2000s, 21,000. So the, not 20,000, so it'd be yeah, 2100 AD. It would change to 14 days apart. But for now, it's 13. So God in his providence has, has had those symbols 13 days apart in our present time. Right. Yeah. So I want to... For a minute just go back to the fibonacci dates um so you can see here there's the 187 days in between these two dates uh that it's a in this case it's the julian um so i actually thought that initially that was one of the you know most significant things about these two fibonacci dates because it's very unlikely that you have this singular date here that is related to this other Fibonacci date, which which would only happen about once every hundred years, like you could go 1921, I guess you could produce it then as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the other observation that came from this Fibonacci date was 2300 days. Um, and it, it, it took us to 811. Uh, and 811, it, it's an important date in relation to um, Bible prophecy. It's, it's when year date principle was established. It's also the first day of the Mayan calendar is 811. I think it's Gregorian, right? Yeah, Gregorian. Yeah, August 11th, 3113, minus 3113. So it'd be 3114 BC, but. Yeah, but in a Gregorian date, you would use minus 3113. Um, but anyway, the point is it's August 11th. So that symbol leads you to the Mayan date, which you're using as a Fibonacci sequence. Yeah. And then it's also the October 22nd Julian in 2014. That's right. Right. Um, Again, you're kind of going now in a reverse. With this exactly. One. That's that, about what I was going to say. Is it's also seemingly to indicate reverse flow of time again, because the October twenty two is at the end rather than I mean, sorry, it's at the beginning rather than at the end where you might expect it. And then of course you have the one eighty seven on the opposite end. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing about it is this. Um, 11 4 that you get again, uh, which if you remember from a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. I was referring that to that as a symbol for October. 
Uh, and you can actually see if you go to the School of the Prophets, uh, there was a, a class that day that got recorded about the number four, which I think is, is probably related in some way that we haven't fully figured out. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, groups of fours that I've noticed. Like, you know, you could say the 423 or the 426 or the 419. So I, I'm, I think it probably, the logic of that may need to be worked out some more, but um, that's, if you go back to that class, it, it's really relating to that number four. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments on this slide? Yeah, the only thing is October 22nd, 2014, you have a Julian date but it is a significant date in the Gregorian calendar in that it's the date that we mark um, for what happened with the, the first, in 2014, it's the date that we mark for the division of, um, of the two classes of priests beginning. Um, it's a rather long explanation for that, but I was at that camp meeting in 2014. And, and that was basically part of the things that the camp meeting was dealing with. And that's the midst of the week. That's the Wednesday on the Gregorian date. But you have the Julian date there. So that's 13 days after. Yeah. And then what about the 62 days and 125 days? Because you got um, the 120 days, which we understand that symbol from the date. Uh, 220 times 21 is 222. Uh, I, I just measured those, but I'm not sure that I actually have a thought about. I, I mean, I know, I know there's a 62 week period mm -hmm. in the 490, but I, I still haven't figured out the logic as to why there might be a 62. So it's really just a measurement at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so on on March six, it, it was one of the dates that we were looking forward to. Uh, really, since since uh, about the January time frame, we had noted that uh, we we believe or we're, we're, that we were observing um, on the the Gregorian calendar that there's a symbolic relationship um, and then the, that that date the march 6 would be um, typifying pentecost in some way yeah so, so there the was sixth, sixth day of the third month so it's the sixth day of the third month is pentecost on the biblical calendar so march 6th is the sixth day of the third month on the gregorian calendar and so we used it as a symbol so there was a couple presentations um I, on the sabbath um which you know would be represented by march uh, march 6 um so theodore presented friday evening then he also presented i believe in the morning service on the topic of the sunday law uh, and part of his presentation included a reference to 217 uh you know when we've had July 21 before, and part of the, it's part of the Millerite timeline. It, it was the midpoint between um, the two expected dates when they expected Christ to return. Uh, and so I, it kind of got me thinking and I started working on this, this diagram. It was a lot smaller, just like, like the other diagram it was much, much smaller in the morning, but by evening it had grown quite a bit um but it's all all that i have so far is included on this diagram so it's a little busy people have have noted that um i'm not sure i, I could break it down into sections but um for now i'm just going to try to walk you through the, the development 
Um, you know, we, we had these starting dates of the 12-6 because on that date there was a, a decree given. Um, it kind of separated our movement. And then we had this other that's, that's that's the um, the declaration do they call it? Yes, it was a declaration that went out on um, December sixth. Well, yeah, December sixth, which you know we just mentioned that has to do with with darkness. Okay. Um, Six, yeah. Or you know papal persecution, because that's the whole period of papal persecution. Yeah, and again, it's 12 times 6, or, or 126, and then you have the year 20. And if you multiply 126 by 20, you get 2520. So it can represent 2520, as well as 126. Yeah. Um, but working off of the, the idea of 217 days, um, I think the first thing I did was I calculated this this. July 10th date, which is a symbol. Yep, July 10th. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had to think for a second because there's, it, it's like everyone says, there's so many lines on here. <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe we'll all come out with some, some way of simplifying this. Um, tenth day of the seventh month obviously is a symbol of the tenth day of the seventh month. Exactly. Yeah. And I also had it in 2020. July 10th was a significant date in 2020. Con connected to the Mayan calendar. Right. It was the center date between two, two seventeens. Um. So, you know, this, this whole, this, the, this diagram, it, it progressed from point to point. Um, uh, I had the 31 days, it, you know, the, the 31 times seven, and I took, I noticed there was 31 days there. Um, and later on, I, you know, because of there's a principle that there should be symmetry, you should be able to fold a chiasm. So you should be able to see a, a relationship. So at the end and the beginning of the 200, these two periods of 217 days, um, you can see that there's a structural relationship. Uh, at the end, you have 426 rabbinic and 426 biblical yeah and um and, and just a point on that you see the 31 days between the rabbinic and the biblical um in 2020 the biblical and rabbinic calendars were in sync with each other which happens once in a while but in this case in 2021 we added an extra month but the rabbis have not, the rabbinic Jews have not added the 13th month. So they happen to be 31 days apart, um, but that's very interesting that that happened. So it's not, it's not something you, that's always gonna be the case. Right. And once I had the, this date of July 6 here, I, I had noticed the 419 up here, the 76 years, yeah, in four nineteen, but it wasn't until I saw July six here that I thought really that I had enough to 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 bring it back there. Even though you know this has four twenty six on it as well. Yeah. Um, now and and what you're seeing there because we did go over that a little bit this morning. You're looking at Hiroshima, right? So August six, nineteen forty five, was the twenty sixth day of the fourth month. And, um, but that's also true 76 years later because that's four metonic cycles. So August 6, 2021 is also the 26th day of the fourth month. But if you go back to July 27th, 1299, 
Um, it's also the 26th day of the fourth month. That's what starts Josiah Lich's prophecy. And so it's, it ends up being 38 metonic cycles from Josiah Lich's prophecy to August 6th, 2021, and 34 metonic cycles to August 6th, 1945. So, I mean, I noticed this back a couple of years ago that the metonic cycle went to 2021, but I didn't think that we were going to get there, right? I mean, I knew that, I mean, I believe that July 18th was the date. So I, I kind of had it in the back of my mind, but yeah. we still have it now in, in the chart. But again, we're not predicting an event on that date per se. We're just measuring time. But the structure here is, is very fascinating that you can get the 31 days in two different ways on either either side. And then and then the 26 days, what's or how do you account for those? I mean, there's actually lots of witnesses to them. Yeah. So going back to March 6 and the presentations that you were giving, you had I think you you marked it as 66 days for, for March 7th, because you had done that whole presentation on the Sunny Law. Um, when I put it on the calendar, it came out to 65. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just a different way of counting. Yeah, I was um, counting inclusively. And also this this whole structure in here of the 126s, these two 126s, we had that previously. Um, I mean, for years, we had a period from um, 1863 to uh, 1989 and then another period of 126 years from 1888 to 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they're separated by 25 years. So it's basically a mirror of that structure. Um, but with two months, five days as the symbol instead of 25 days. Exactly, but also 65 days as part of uh, the prophetic mirror, right? You know, the end, the endings of the of the prophetic mirrors, sixty five years. The two twenty five. So I mean, in a way, it kind of ties those two things together. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also, uh, you know, I got a little bit confused when I, I was driving, I was driving back from the hospital, so I got a little bit confused about how the, how the. Uh, dates were lining up but there was um 20 26 days between december 6 and the first of the year which immediately applied implied because we we know that one year 26 days we've known that for a long time is equal to 391 so i that was one of the first things i put down as the 391 um in this in that 26 day period and that kind of gave, gave me a frame. And I did not have this until towards the end, uh, the 147 days. Mm -hmm. um, because I just thought there was a space there, I should measure it. And then I realized, okay, that's seven times 21. So it's again, the symbol for midnight. Mm -hmm. July 21st. As a symbol. Right. And later on, I think it may have been the next day, I was looking at, uh, I was zoomed in because I was thinking about uh, 731 again. You know, we had these two 7031s. Yeah. Um, I had that 731 date, this 30, 731, the Fibonacci date, and it turned out that the midpoint was also here on August 6 as well. Okay. Yeah, so August 6 becomes the midpoint of this period of 13, day, 13 days between the Julian and Gregorian dates. Yes, 13 days or 18720 minutes. Yeah. Now, just to deal with the 217 days, the other symbol that that comes from is uh, the 70 weeks, the 62 weeks. That, that is divided, when it's divided, it gives you um, 731. And Jesus is crucified 
on 31 AD in the midst of the week. So the 3-7, the 31-7 also relates to the cross. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. And, and so be a lot of these, so when we're dealing with these symbols, you know, just to sort of clarify this, these symbols come from biblical prophecy. And what we've had is lately is a bit of a feedback loop in that we, we use biblical prophecy. We saw these dates and structures in our lines and uh, we can now go back and see we can apply some of these things to biblical prophecies that we didn't see before. That is, this, this has given us more light on the biblical prophecies as well. Yeah. Um, there's a, I guess I didn't talk about this 151, but we did in a previous slide, I think, talk about 151 a little bit, mm -hmm. which is also produced here. Um, There was one, oh yeah, I was thinking about Raphia. So Raphia 217, was that BC? Yeah, that was the other one I was gonna mention. Yeah, so so 217 BC is Raphia, which is midnight as well, as a symbol. Yeah, so that's basically another witness to midnight. Yeah. I think um, we can probably go to the next one. Yeah. It's just, you know, for people looking on the outside, looking at this, I mean, it could be very, very cryptic and not make much sense. So a person needs to understand where these symbols come from, but these are extremely unlikely things to have occurred by chance. And, but yet they're founded on biblical prophecy. We didn't come up with these things, you know, out of nowhere. They, they're structures that are based upon symbols that are well-established. Okay, so this one. So um, on March 19, uh, that was a Friday night. Uh, we were having uh, one of our studies on the week of Christ, I believe. And uh, at the beginning of the study, we, 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 we were talking about the equinox um, and you were going through um, the website, the Skyview Cafe, and everything, and it, it, it stated there that it would be 3.28 a.m., I believe, that it would take place, so I, I had set a, a countdown timer to the, to the equinox. I wasn't really thinking, you know, it's going to be seven hours or eight hours or whatever. I just set that timer, um, and I noticed uh, that it was seven hours, 18 minutes and 26, 20 seconds that you had referred to August 6th in that presentation. Mm -hmm. um, so you had set the timer and then I mentioned August 6th. And when I mentioned August 6th, you looked at the timer. Yeah, I was looking at the timer and I, I noticed that, it, that that was the, the time and the countdown. Okay. Um, so I just, that's this reference here at the bottom. And then when I actually put it into the line, I, I started with this, I, you know, I measured to, to August 6th and that gave me 139 days, which implied, you know, the reverse, the, um, well, you could, if you, it's not, okay. I, I say it's a reverse, but it's not exactly, if you, no, this one's not a reverse. 193 is an exact reverse. This is just, there's a word for it. I can't remember, but it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's just mixing up those numbers in a different order, but it still yeah. relates to it as a symbol. To me, that implied 391 because all the numbers are there basically. I'm not sure how to, how to <laughs> represent that. But anyway, when I took it back 391 days, it gave us uh, the date for the last time Elder Jeff spoke, which which was um, July 11th, mm -hmm. um, and it also gave us the 419, uh, two, two 419s, um, which you know in previous slides we've seen that 419 is related. Yeah. To those cycles. Yeah. And of course, it's the 252 days. Yeah. 
to the equinox. So, so Elder Jeff speaking on July 11th, 20, he hasn't a clue about any of this, right? Nobody's doing this intentionally. Um, and yet, you know, God continues to unfold these lines as we pass through time. Now, this August 6th, we, we, we know it's the destruction of Jerusalem and the bombing of Hiroshima. And both of those are attached to two different dates. The destruction of Jerusalem is tied to the 10th day of the fifth month, both in 586 and in 70 AD. And then you have this um, August 6th uh, for, for our time uh, and, and then trying to decide what that's going to mean. So August 6th is coming up in our line and we can we can see that it's part of the structure uh one is it's you know 38 metonic cycles from the start of josiah lich's prophecy and it's four metonic cycles which is four times 19 um from hiroshima four times 19 years seven six years right and I would also just note that this division of time that we, we have here, it's we've seen it in other places when we when we divided the, the 391 mm -hmm. into I think we had already wasn't it even back was it part of uh, November 9th to uh July 18 somehow? Um Yes, it well the 391 yeah it's it's part of that structure but it shows up a little bit differently. But it is part of that structure the 391 and the 252. Um so if you were to look backwards um yeah I don't I don't know how to do it without drawing it out. But anyway it's related. And and the 139 shows up again and again in my lines as well. So um and anything else about this one? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and look because I I would thought that it was related to that whole July, I mean the whole November night thing. But well, yeah, well one of the things that I had was um, one of my initial ones was from November 9th to July 18th was 252 days, but I divided it as 139. And 114, of course, doing that a little bit differently because they don't actually add up to 252. Um, but I was using the 114 days from July 18th to November 9th, 2020, and 391 days further to November 20th, to December 5th, 2021. So, so I had some of these these lines. So we. Uh, you know, so, so before we even had all these detailed lines, I was breaking them down in this fashion. And so we had ended up having having from November 9th, 2019 to March 27th, 2020, 2020 is 139 days. So that's how I finally ended up uh, looking at it. So that 139 shows up. And also from July 18th to December 4th is 139 days. Okay. And so there's there's a lots of others 139 days. Um, July 18th to December 4th. I also have 193 days show up quite a bit. Um, so one of the things is uh, June 27th, 2020, it's 193 days to January 6th. And then from January 6th, it's 193 days to July 18th. So there's another 193. And the June 27th is part of the structure um, dealing with the 1533. So that's just a whole other structure uh, that works in with this. Um, and I, I was thinking a little bit more. And I know we had 391.5 days that took us to November 9th, right? Uh, from uh, from October 13 to November 9th. Yes, right. yeah, th yeah 391.5 from noon October 13th 
Uh, and then we had an additional 252 days from there until July 18, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you could just see that these are adjacent and right. It and, and basically, we, uh, yeah. And we also have 139 days from March 27th, from yesterday until August 13th, 2021. So that another 139 days period that shows up. Um, so these three 191s and, and the 193s and the 139s all interconnect between these various lines. Okay, so. Okay, so this, this slide was one of the more recent ones. Uh, I kind of started by going back to one of the first slides that you saw. Uh, remember that 86 days? Yeah. Uh, and this is where I was looking to see that, you know, maybe there's some symmetry that's missing. Um, so I started by mapping out in the 104. The 104 was on my mind because of the 426s, because that's four times 26 is 104. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wanted to see what happens if you go back 86 days or what if you go back or go forward 104. I actually didn't, when I, when I started this diagram, I didn't know that the 104 would lead me to August 6th and that's where it went. Yeah. Or, or 105 actually, if you measure from the beginning of of uh, April 23, it's 105 days. It's 104 if you measure from the end of yeah. April so 23. So between the two days is 104. Exactly. From the end of one to the beginning of the other. And we do that sometimes. And, and there's always a reason why. Um, so. So yeah, it's giving us the 426 is as spans of time um, and, and right. it gives us an additional 86 day span of time. It gives us 19 days, which I related. I related these, whoops. Well, to the ninth day of the first month, which is where you start. Yeah, yeah I related that to the beginning, the 19 days, ninth day of the first, first month. Uh, but also, when I thought about that, and I noticed that it's July 18, and I knew we had like a year there, so that made me think, oh, uh, that's one year, 19 days up here, which is 11, nine. Mm -hmm. And this entire span here is uh, 209 days, which is the symbol of uh, 20th day of the ninth month. Mm -hmm. uh, just, it might be good to, to talk for a couple seconds about our a little bit about the November 9th. Um, you know, if you go back to, to the history, um, things that came before November 9th was considered a symbol for the close of probation. Uh, it, it appeared when we looked at eight, 1849 that Stephen had noticed. Yeah, so eight, 1844 days from October 22nd, 1844, went to November 9th, 1849. Yes. That's what you're referring to. Yeah. yeah. And, and which would have been connected with the, the, the idea is if the church had not rejected the sanctuary message, that that would have been involved in maybe the close of probation would have happened then prior to Christ's coming. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of a guess. But the fact that you could take October 22nd, 1844 and count 1844 days and come to November 9th as a date. Um, back when we first had November 9th, that was a pretty powerful symbol for people. Yeah, so there was a, um, a test and yourself when you confirmed it with the 391 that that gave us the 11.9. Um, yeah. you, and you had a lot of online, online symbols that I think you, you covered that on your presentation on um, the next day, October 14. 
Yeah, and the interesting thing about that, you know, is this this symbol of October 13th and November 9th being connected by 391.5. What was really interesting to me, uh, especially that Tess rejected it. So Tess never accepted uh, October 13th as the giving of the midnight cry in our movement. And she never accepted the 391 and a half days. Um, but it's interesting that her, her hero is um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And um, we know that Tess was born on November 9th. In, in what year? Anybody remember? 89. No, she, she was born in 1990. Oh, okay. Okay, so she wasn't born November 9th, 1989. But November 9th, 1990. And Alexander Ocasio Cortez was born at noon. So on October 13th, 1989. So the distance between their two births is 391.5 days. Uh, but, but Tess never, I don't know if she knows that, if she ever thought about it. But um, it, it shows that one is that even people who end up projecting the message that have been part of the message, they're still in the lines. And, and even somebody who wasn't in the line, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, she still becomes part of that line as a symbol. Yeah, in the symbol of the 20th day of the ninth month, where, where do we find that? Well, that's, that's from Ezra chapter 10. And it's... Uh, it's the, the end date of the period of time with the 10th day of the seventh month in the middle. So from the first day of the fifth month, when they arrive at Jerusalem, there's three days before they bring the gold and silver to the temple. And then during that period of time, Ezra is setting up the civil authority, and he makes a call to repentance to separate from the strange wives. Um, and he gives them three days. And then and it ends on the 20th day of the ninth month. So on the 20th day of the ninth month, they're gathered after a period of three days. And with this time of great rain, so it was raining. And so there's symbol in there, symbolism in there as well. So the 20th day of the ninth month is also um, 777 days from November 9th. So when you get to December 25th, 2021, the biblical date, is the 20th day of the ninth month. So it becomes a symbol uh, to the end of a line is the way that I look at it. Um, yeah. What exactly it means as far as in this movement, how it's going to, how it manifests itself, that I don't understand. I just know that it's a symbol that shows up and it's significant as a measuring stick for establishing the 10th day of the seventh month in 457 BC. For Ezra though, it was uh, uh, basically a, another close of probation or a judgment time for, for the strange wives, right? Yeah, because they, if they didn't come, they would be either banished and have their goods confiscated um, if they didn't come to Jerusalem within three days. And then once they got to Jerusalem, then Ezra set up uh, um, a timetable uh, to deal with all the divorces, to do it according to the law. And, and that began on the first day of the 10th month, and it went to the first day of the first month in 456 BC. So the story of Ezra going from Babylon to Jerusalem covers a period of exactly one year from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. Uh, and all events. So in the history of... Uh... The August 6, 426, and in 1945, there was an ultimatum given on July 27, right? And they had a certain amount of time to surrender, which they did not. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, keep going. So the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar is when the first bomb was dropped. And we've already talked about the 10th day of the fifth month and the two destructions of Jerusalem, right? Yeah, so 
yeah, so we have the 10th day of the fifth month, which is the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 and 70 AD. And it's also uh, repeated in Ezekiel's literal history, in his line on his left side ending, and also in his uh, third, uh, second vision, second vision. It's on the 10th day of the fifth month. So, so you have all these 10 days of the fifth month that relate to the destruction of Jerusalem. Yeah. And how long is a metonic cycle again? Metonic cycle is 19 years. It's 6,940 days or 2,000 or 235 lunar months. So cyanotic okay. months. So it's, uh, you know, it's not exactly that long to the minute. It, it drifts over time uh, slightly, you know, a, a couple hours here and there. So um, every, every 19 years, it's not exactly 19 years to the minute. But it's it's pretty close, and you can use the metonic cycle sort of to predict what's going to happen 19 years from now. With and what the Jews did is set it up as a cycle, so they could just set up a calendar that repeated. So one of the properties then is that you can know that in 19 years that things will be very similar to the way that they are in the current day, 19 years from now. Yeah, this you'll have the same. Uh, it, the same biblical date and the same Gregorian date. Okay. That's why uh, 26th day of the fourth month is August 6th in 1945. And in 2021, August 6th is the 26th day of the fourth month. That's 76 years later, but they still line up every 19 years. Yeah, I think the main thing I'm, I'm I'm considering is that it's a pattern that allows you to predict what's going to happen. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's all the time we have for this. Yeah. And this is my yeah. last slide. Yeah, we just, yeah, we're almost done there. So, you know, I think it's very helpful to have all this here. Obviously, this is not, uh, you know, a light sermon. Um, and, you know, so we have all of these, these symbols that now we can put into our line. And, you know, we're not making predictions. We're not saying that on August 6th, Nashville is gonna be attacked by a nuclear bomb. Um, but if it did happen, I wouldn't be surprised, but there's no way I have the information to say that it's going to happen uh, because we had way more information that pointed to July 18, 2020. Uh, but we ignored information that told us it was going to be a failed prediction. Um, and I don't see that type of information being presented for August 6th. It's not, it's a lot of information that points to August 6th as a significant date, but it doesn't give us enough information to make a prediction to warn people. The warning has been done. And we don't know exactly when that attack is going to occur. And if we were going to make a warning again, it would not really hardly be heated, and it would just be, you know, the boy crying wolf, right? It would, it would weaken our our initial prediction. So I think to leave it as it is, as far as a prediction, we just know that whenever these events occur, it appears that they should occur you know, on a significant date. Uh, but we might not even know what that significant date is until it happens, because even though we're measuring the time, there may be a structure or something that, that pops up that we weren't aware of. Like we wouldn't have known the significance of January 6th if that siege hadn't occurred. You know, we didn't have January 6th on our line, but when the siege occurred, we could then recognize its structure. And somebody looking at it from the outside would just say, well, you're just making things fit. But the way these things fit together, I've tried with random dates and you don't get anything like this. Uh, there's specific design involved in what we're seeing in these lines. And the question is, what do they mean? And that that is probably gonna be understood as time goes on. Any other final thoughts, Saran? No. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for that. Um, I know it's it's going to be a watched video, but uh, 
I don't think people will just sit down and watch it all the way through all at once. They're, they're going to have to go through it slowly. Uh, but you, you are going to, I can put a link to your, um, uh, to your diagrams when I put it up on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, because I can I, just put I'll, that link. Do you want me to just, I, or do you want some other link? Um, I was thinking of publishing it to a, a new site that I created on, on YouTube. Okay, and then just give me the link and then I'll post yeah. it on the video. I'll give, yeah, you can post it for me. Yeah, um, you can post it on your, your own YouTube page as well. Yeah, I will. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we can, we can close. Okay. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Your father, I want to thank you for this this time and this opportunity to study together and to consider these things. I pray that you will give us continue, can, can, continued understanding, continue to unfold these things that um, uh, we would see how we need to relate and how we need to witness to people. And I pray um, that you give us the wisdom. And I want to thank you and ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.